In today's episode, we chat with KGI Dean of Students, Cindy Martinez, who oversees student affairs, disability services, career services, and residential life. She provides leadership, vision, and direction for activities and services that enhance students' experiences and engagement, along with their internship and employment outcomes. She also facilitates open communication and information sharing between the students and the administration. If you enjoy the KGI podcast, take a moment to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. We'd also like to take a moment to welcome all of our students back to campus as today, September 4th, marked the first day of classes. Cindy, thanks so much for joining us today, recording this on the first day back of classes. Uh, to start off, I know you've been through a couple busy months here at KGI, but how did you first become interested in working here in Claremont? That's a great question. Um, I have to tell you, just growing up um, locally in West Covina, California, and then residing in Diamond Bar, um, I've always had an eye for the Claremont Colleges. Um, Working at a private institution in Los Angeles, um, I really like the vibe of private institutions. I feel that the resources that are available to students um, don't compare to any other institution. I mean, me, myself, going to a state school, um, people used to always tell me it didn't matter what school you went to, um, as long as you get that degree, which is true, the degree does matter, but the now working at a private institution, I see that the resources for students are unbelievable. So I wanted to be work at an institution that truly was invested in the students and in their success. So when I was looking at all of the different Claremont colleges, I thought, what would be the best fit based off of who I am, what I'm passionate about, um, I having a background in the sciences, um, having a bachelor's of science in biology, and working at City of Hope, um, it feels great to come full circle. From starting in the sciences to then transitioning to higher education, um, to now coming back to the sciences where it's truly a passion of mine. In terms of your role as Dean of Students, what are your types of responsibilities and how um, do those responsibilities lead to better success for the students? Great question. Um, I would say that for me, I look at myself as the liaison between administration. I think that higher education can be very difficult to navigate. Um, Sometimes I think that from the outside looking in, it can seem as a very bureaucratic system. And so me being, you know, I was a first generation student. I didn't really truly understand higher education. Um, I didn't understand how administration and how decisions were made. And so I truly um, invested in the success of students. And so I feel that me being in my role as a dean of students, I can be that liaison for students. And at the table, I can be the voice for the students. Um, I don't necessarily think that I'm always going to be, um, how should I say it, the yes ma'am, or always be the one that's going to be saying yes to what senior administration wants. But I can guarantee you that I will always be the voice of the student. And so I see my role as being very engaged with the students. I can't be that voice unless I'm going to their events unless I'm walking around campus, unless I'm hanging out with students at the cafe and soon, you know, being with um, the housing and the student center. Um, I truly want to be involved with even student government. I had a, I was able to come this weekend on Saturday to say a welcome to the students. Um, so I definitely think that as my role as dean of students, um, that I can get a pulse of the students and understand what they want here and really help them see KGI as they want it to be. And being that we are a small community, still about 600 students here in Claremont, I'm sure you've already gotten to meet plenty of them, as you mentioned, student government this past weekend. What do you feel like makes KGI students unique? That's a great question. Um, what I definitely feel, when, the moment I walk onto campus, and that's something that's super important to me from the moment of you know choosing a college, you always tell students, it's not really about what they offer, but it's how you feel when you step onto that campus. And for me, it's... Um, what makes KGI students unique is innovation. I feel it when I'm on campus. I see it. I hear it when I'm talking to students. They want to be part of something bigger, and they want to be able to create change. They didn't come here to for the to be in a comfort in their comfort area, if you will, or um, for something that already exists, they they are here to leave their mark. And that's what's exciting is that every student that I'm talking to, they're thinking about how they can make KGI their own unique experience. Um, so that's what I feel when I talk to the students. And that's what I feel when I walk onto campus. 
in terms of, you know, just the different campus events, obviously, um, we've got plenty here already in the first week. Um, what are you most excited about as you head into your first full year, first full academic year in terms of what's available to the students? What what I th- am really impressed with is the amount of student organizations that KGI has, um, both professionally, social, those hybrid student organizations. And what I'm really excited about is f- seeing even new clubs getting formed with our new genetics program. Um, it's exciting to be able to see, you know, meet students at orientation and talking to them about clubs and telling them that, hey, if you don't see something that's here, you can create your own opportunity. You can create your own club. And I've already started having conversations with students about how to form student clubs here at KGI and talking to the program directors about what they would love to see as far as student organizations, um, but also hearing the stories that students have to tell. I know um, for Welcome Week, um, Nusha's putting together some programs with the international students and how unique, you know, these international students and what story they each have to tell. So I'm really looking forward to hearing these stories of students, like what led them here to KGI and what is it that they want to do with their degree? Um, So that's what I'm really looking forward to is helping students connect those dots so that they really are telling the story that they want to tell by the time that they graduate. And lastly, kind of going back to your personal background, in, in leading you here to KGI, was there a certain mentor, uh, obviously you're advocating for our current students, but maybe someone that advocated for you or mentored you along the way to get you where you are today, if you want to give it a nod or, or a recognition of them? That's a great question. Um, you know, being, I mentioned, you know, being the first in my family to go to colleges um, and just even a woman minority in the sciences was never easy to me. Um, and so I think that I really lacked having a mentor in my undergraduate years. And so when I was working at City of Hope, I had a physician tell me, you know, if you're not going to go to medical school, because I couldn't afford it. That was really the truth behind why I didn't go. He said, what is it that you want to do? And I said, well, it was my dream um, to go to a prestigious private institution institutions such as, such, as, such as USC to get my master's degree. Um, and there's all these, there's multiple people, right, that really are life-changing moments of impact. And for that physician, um, he introduced me to his wife that worked at USC. Um, She's then told me um, about getting a master's degree at USC. And it was through her dual role as a faculty member and as a administrator that I realized that I could do both. That I think all my life I was realizing it had to be an either or, right? There was these dichotomies of you can only do administration or you can only do teaching. Um, and her name was Helen Needleman, and she worked at USC at the School of Social Work. And she said, why does it have to be either or? Why couldn't it be both? Um, and then as I realized I wanted a career in higher education to pay it forward and to give it back, one of um, a mentor of mine was Lori, Lori White, who at the time at USC was the Associate Vice President of Student Affairs, who she strongly believed in paying it forward and giving back. Um, And it very much echoed what I believe in as servant leadership. When I went on to get a PhD in leadership studies, it's no longer about me and developing necessarily myself. It's all the people that I work with and the people that are trying to aspire to be into a position such as mine. Like I feel like I owe it back to them. So I think that those two people was Helen Needleman and Lori White, who really were life changing um, people of impact that changed the pathway for me. And I always remember both of them. Uh, Every day, I always say I want to be a leader just like them. And I want to be able to give it back to students and to even staff members who may below work underneath me or who are thinking about a career in higher education. I always do informational meetings from people who find me, whether it's um, through LinkedIn or whether it's through alumni associations from the different institutions that I worked at. Um, So I truly believe in paying it forward. And that's, I think, what is my motto that I live by every day is making an impact on somebody else's life and hoping that I motivated them in some way. Can't wait to see the impact you have here on KGI and you continue to have both with your interactions with students and obviously being that liaison within administration. But thanks again, Cindy, for taking the time this morning. Thank you for having me.